So I've had some people asking me how uh, I do my weathered paint, chip paint on my roofs, and it's uh, it's actually pretty straightforward and uh, fairly easy process. You can vary it color-wise in the amount. You can have uh, like this one, which is quite a fair bit of chipping, versus uh, this one, which has a lighter amount of chip. Sometimes you can even just have a bit on the edges and in the middle. But uh, it's a very easy and effective weathering technique, and I'll go through how I do it myself. There's many ways it's done. This is just how I found it works for me. So for the uh, paint, I've, I really like the uh, Vallejo Air stuff. The uh, generally use a mix of a gray and a silver type of color. So we've got steel, a neutral gray. Uh, this is just a straight up silver and a light gray. These kind of are my preferred colors because they give you a nice, to me it looks like a zinc plated metal uh, roof effect. And then for applying it, you use a, uh, a makeup sponge. I bought this at the dollar store. And then for some edges and uh, stuff like that, I've got this. It's a uh, Leonhard's 5 slash 0 very fine tip uh, paintbrush. It's very nice for doing edges and like the along the edge of the, the roof and corners and such. And then, you know, you can use larger ones. I sometimes use these disposable uh, brushes. You can use these kind of small micro brushes as well. And then, you know, if you want to do a bit of a larger scale thing, you can use some of these bigger brushes. But, but uh, I find these give a bit too much of a coverage. I like to do small areas. So I'll get these cars out of the way and I'll get the uh, one I'm going to work on today. So today I'm going to work on this 57 foot CN transporter, auto transporter. It's a Sylvan resin kit that I finished building and deckling with the Sylvan decals. Uh, I'm using it as a car that lasted in the Maple Leaf scheme into the 1980s. So it's going to have a bit of a heavier weathering pattern. Uh, so I'm, I've got it mounted on this basically a, a box that I've put a couple of holes to uh, put some uh, towel uh, toilet paper rolls and it's uh, going to be a good stand for doing 40 foot and 50 foot long cars. So what I'm going to do is I got it so I don't have to worry about moving the, the roof as I'm doing it. As well I use this, uh, it's just a shot cup plastic cup for uh, for basically as my hole it's got a nice little depression in the middle it gives me a good spot to mix my paint and then I'll uh, use the I think today I'll use the a neutral gray and the steel so these are the 71065 71051 are the ones I'm going to try giving them a bit of a shake and then what I will do is I'll just take a couple of drops of in this case the steel so it gives you a nice metallic and then I'll take the uh, the gray and add a drop or two just to kind of mute it and give you a bit more of a, a gray tone so I'll do one drop so it's a two to one right now and I'll see if I can uh, get that mixed to my satisfaction I'll use one of these older brushes that have so what you want is a bit of a I like a bit of a metallic sheen, but it's still got a, a gray tone to it, so it's a bit more, to my eye, it looks like the zinc, the zinc plating that you would see on a lot of the, the metal. So looking at this, it's still got a bit of a silver tone, but it's got a gray, gray overtone to it. So as well, you got to make sure you've got paper towels just to clean your brushes on. So I might add another drop of the gray just to drop the silver down a bit. So we'll have another drop. And the silver eats up a lot of the gray. It seems to, you, you don't get a lot of the, the gray coming through. You still have a bit of that silvery sheen to it. So I think that looks 
good to my eye. It's still got a bit of a metallic tone, but it's got that muted kind of grayish undertone that you see on a lot of the zinc. Because the zinc roofs tend to have a lot more of a gray tone to them versus the the uh, other, like a straight silver. So then I take the uh, makeup sponge and I just tear it into a, a rough edge. You know, you can make it rounded and depending what kind of corners you want, I'll get rid of the sharper corners on it just to make it a bit more random. So, you know, it's a nice random thing. And then I'll uh, move my car in. Actually, I'll show you what I'm doing here first. So I, you know, you dab the sponge on to get a bit of a silver. So I, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll basically remove most of the paint on a on the uh, paper towel so there's just a little bit coming off. And then we'll get the car in here and then decide how you want to do it. I mean, you seem to have very random patterns on most roofs on these freight cars. They tend to be... Um, depends how good the paint shop was, but edges tend to seem tend to have more flaking and I've also seen on the end pattern panels there'll be a bit more of a cover a co uh, silver tones to it so yeah you just dab it on this one I think I've talked too much so the silver uh, has dried up so I'll put a bit more on the sponge here dab it off okay so there's still some paint but and if you press hard, you can sometimes get more silver as it, or more paint coming out as it's kind of sucks into the into the foam. So I just initially just give it a couple of light dabs. You know, maybe get a bit more on the on the ribs, just because it's tends to tends to be edges that catch a lot of the a lot of the paint flaking. I guess probably because that's just where the paint starts to come off. And then, you know, you can... Random is pretty much all you want. You just want a very randomized type of pattern to it. So you can see this panel's got a, a bit more coming off. And then, you know, just... I try and go light on the first pass and then, you know, do it a bit more as I go. Do another round if I think I want a bit heavier. I like getting the, the roof ribs a bit more. It kind of picks out the top of the rib. And then I just kind of go over. Don't want to make it look too regular, but you also don't want it to be cartoonish. So it's a bit of a trial and error. And I mean, if it's if you make the error, then you know either you can try and remove all the paint or you, you got to yeah. ideally not strip it but you don't want to be uh, you, you want to learn from your mistakes and a light touch is better than a heavy hand so this one I'm just trying to generally give a bit more of a randomized look to it you know this one I'm going to do some panels heavier than others Try not to get any on the sides of the car. The car body itself doesn't get too much. Um, and then, yeah, just noodle along, try and get it. So I'll just, and then if I'm looking and I see I got a bit of a, what I can see as a pattern, I'll try and come back and change it so it doesn't look so regular. It's a bit of a, like I said, trial and error. Rooftop shots are always good if you can find them, but they're sometimes a little challenging for some cars. And the thing I like with the gray is it doesn't give you the really silly, shiny color, but it's also uh, you know, muted with the gray, gray tones. So, whoops. See, that one I went on a bit heavy. So there you go. There's an example. So I'll try and clean that up. I might have to come back with some thinner later on and clean that up. So I'll do that. So there's an example of what happens when you get it a bit thick. So don't dab like I did, just gentle, gentle, gentle. So that one I'll have to come back and see what I can do. I might just try and 
feather the edges, make this a heavier pattern. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. This panel is getting a lot more weathering and chipping happening on this. And you see that on some of the prototypes. Some of the panels will just be completely bare metal, while other ones are much less so. Like I said, this is an older car in my era. I model the 80s, so the 80s is a bit of a, you know, these cars were towards the end of their lives, so they didn't get a lot of maintenance. And I suspect the paint was probably taking the brunt of a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the weathering. So that looks better in my eye. I mean, it's still kind of heavy, but I'll mute this down with some uh, washes later on. I'm going to do a oil wash in this car afterwards, so maybe I'll do another video with that. But I've done oil videos before, and you know I like the effects you get with it. So yeah, I think it's a you know it's an effective, quick process, and you can. Get some really neat, uh, neat weathering and it kind of highlights that your cars aren't all factory fresh. But you also don't want them to be beaten within a, an inch of their lives. So they can choose how you want to do it. Okay, I'll pause the video and I'll finish up and we'll continue after that. All right, so we're done. First pass on the roof. So like I said, you know, generally fairly light. I've got a few areas where maybe I went a little little bit heavy, but I mean it you do get the variation. So, you know, a couple of panels with some failure, like paint failure will be a bit more of a interesting thing from a aesthetic point. But uh the other thing I too will do sometimes is uh if I want to highlight the the edges of the the car the car the roof, just take the uh I'll put this so you can see take my fine brush same thing take off most of the paint and then just try and just get the edges it's easier to do with the brush than the uh, and a sponge find and pick out specific details if you want the if you want the you know sometimes you see the the rivet strip along the edge gets a bit of metal showing and yeah you can be very very selective of what gets painted but you also got to be careful not to overdo it or it gets cartoonish but this one i think i'll just do a few spots where the paint's peeled just because it's a bit of a fine line between a cartoon and a nicely done car so and i find these ribs sometimes will the roof ribs will sometimes the end caps will get a bit more silver paint coming off or showing or the metal showing through so same just random random patterns Yeah, it looks fine to my eye. And this will be a personal taste thing. Some people don't want them to be too much, but some people want them to be beaten all to hell. Your choice. I'll just stick with somewhere in between. Like I said, these are still being used every day, but they're also getting a bit long in the tooth. CN had started to paint uh, most of these cars into the noodle scheme by the time it was uh, my era, but I I wanted to have one car that was in the old maple leaf scheme. So if you overdo it, just try and make it so it blends in a bit more. And like I said, I'm also going to do a uh, layer of some oil washes over this so it'll mute everything down that's the thing is layering tends to make up for any overdone sections i mean ultimately uh you want it to be believable so carry on 
this, then well, that might be a bit much. So I'll try and turn that down. So we've got a bit, you know, it's the same panel, so it's good sometimes to show it's all part of the same paint. I've done the entire roof with uh, brushes and that's much more time consuming, but if you uh, have got a sponge is much preferable to just get decent raw, you know, gives you a good, good effect and it's much quicker. Since I've got a fleet, I don't want to spend uh, three hours on each car. So there you go. I think we're getting close for this one. Just got a couple more spots. And sometimes you want to get along the areas you can't really reach with the with the sponges easily. So that's where the fine tip brush comes in nice and handy get some of these valley areas that are a little harder to get into. I think I'm going to stick to mostly on the edges. There you go. It's a, there's the first pass on this car. And I'll be, like I said, I'll be doing more, uh, more washes and stuff. And so this will all be much more muted and kind of covered in grime and grunge, which is usually what you see with freight cars.